Spending. How much does she need? Seven still there? Mm. Old six still there. She needs like seventy or less, so Okay. Here we go. There we go. You guys slip into the apartment building like fucking rates. There's the apartment building itself, three floors up, one floor in the basement. Yeah. The old guy's going to be fucking surprised. Oh, what are you doing here? <laughs> well, your choices are either going down or going in through a hallway and up some stairs. Uh, I think we should go down and speak to the caretaker first and let him know we're here. So he doesn't yeah. be like, ah! and be like, we're here. You know, he's official, right? So he's with the family. So. Unless he's the one taking an eye on them. Freddy card. Well, we need to talk to him, don't we? So. Yeah. Okay. You guys yeah. fucking appear in the. Uh, uh, like little basement uh, thing of the uh, house and uh, knock upon their door keeping a sharp eye and hoping these aren't the ones who are spying on you because if they are then it's going to be really hard to have a talk to them without them knowing you're here. A mouse-headed uh, lady, uh, older mouse-headed lady answers door and says, Hello. Hello. We're here to speak to the caretaker. I'm Mrs. Giles. Please come in. Thank you. She said, looking at your threads. Uh, she lets you in. She says, Mr. Giles, visitors, uh, right you are, Mrs. Giles. A mouse headed guy comes out. Hello. 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 So. Let's get no. down to business, shall we? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. They look at you. Should we uh, start with a uh, nice beverage? Uh, we don't really have anything suitable uh, for. Uh, such a gentleman as you, uh, the lady begins looking nervous. I give them the shifty dog eyes. I think that. <laughs> right, she goes and gets you a glass of milk. That'll do. Everybody sits there and watches you drink it. They seem nervous. They hope you like it. Or it's been poisoned. You're not sure which. So, we're just here with a couple of questions about what happened. About Arthur. Ah, <laughs> the young uh, summer. The one unfortunately, <laughs> uh, I slept through it until the guard arrived. How do you mean slept through what? Well, there was apparently some sort of noise. Uh, one of the other tenants, the third floor tenant, that would be Mr. Blah, blah, blah. This is longer, Mr. What Empathy. Marcus ah. Borelli. Uh, Mr. Borelli. I have my empathy. Is he porky pies? He, he seems very nervous. But does he sound like he's being honest? Uh, you're, you're not really. He, 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 his nervousness is pretty much overriding everything. He's not apparently used to having really well-dressed people interrogating him and drinking his milk. What? <laughs> He, he works for a rich aristocrat son. <laughs> uh, not exactly. Uh, it doesn't seem that uh, uh, that is the case. Uh, you're, you're, especially since he mentioned uh, the third floor tenant, Mr. Borelli, is the one who sounded the alarm and got the guards. So hold on, I'm confused. So he, he's not the caretaker for this guy's property. Uh, he's the caretaker for this property, but whether it's owned by this guy or this guy rented it is unclear. Oh. Okay. So you never you never dealt with the young Summers? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, 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 well, um, 
Yes. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Giles, he indicates his wife, who he still calls Mrs. Giles, and maybe when they're in private, mother, because they're that kind of a couple. Uh, she would clean his rooms once a week. We've been instructed to not go up there by uh, his lawyers, his mm -hmm. solicitors. And uh, in the recent times when you were cleaning the room, was there anything uh, strange or out of place? Oh, no, Mrs. sir. Giles? Who oh, no, knows, sir? She's looking at the ground. Uh, no. Everybody give me etiquette rolls to know something. Oh, crap. <laughs> Kinley's like, I will fucking drink this milk and like it. Uh, oh, I know exactly what I do. Go on. I, I say to her, Madam, yes? if you would like some help removing that stick up your ass, I am an expert pathologist. <laughs> they both just gape at you. Wow. It is curious about this proctology thing, apparently, with her fumble. Mm -hmm. um, you guys aren't really sure what's going on here. Well, he goes into interrogating these two out the window. Ah, uh, territory. Did I say interrogate? That was a slip of the tongue. They, they, they just look baffled and at the floor. Right. So, who sounded the alarm again? That it would be the, the third floor Mark tenant. Mr. Borelli, yes, sir. Okay, and, and what floor did uh, the young Summers live on? Second floor, sir. Okay, so is there one apartment per floor or multiple apartments per floor? Yes, sir. No, which one? Uh, yes, sir. Multiple or one? No, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> God. They appear to be well shaken now. Yeah, let's just leave these two. They're useless. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm done. They both stare at the floor as you guys leave. Give me listen rolls after doors close. Oh, God damn. They better not mouth this off or I'm going to kick that door down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wait, you guys heard. Yeah, we heard that. What do you think that was about, Father? I don't understand the rich myself, Mother. <laughs> Fair enough. Don't worry, Kimberly. I'll be back still later. Tempted. <laughs> still tempted. Just kidding. Oh, I'll be back later to talk them both out. Don't worry. What's a proctologist? I don't know. Some sort of medical <laughs> doctor, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> right. You guys uh, creep up. Uh, there's a ground floor apartment, which I, since I'm an American, we call first floor. There's a apartment up above that which since i'm an american we call second floor and there's an apartment up above that which uh, since i'm an american i call too far to walk my fat ass up all those stairs mm -hmm. uh, do you want to visit mr Bavali for see what yeah. he says yeah i like that idea no problem you guys tromp your way up some long ass stairs uh eventually you reach the top floor apartment um it's uh yeah doors closed i knock what time, is, what time of the day is it by the way roughly uh it's uh maybe 10 or 11. you don't own a pocket watch hmm. no i don't before noon though okay. you would know because you haven't had your uh midday uh, uh bottle of whiskey yet that's true Jack down. No problem. Eventually, a hippo-headed uh, uh, guy answers the uh, door. He's got straggling hair and large, watery eyes. Yes, yes, he says. Mr. Bavelli? Yes, yes. Hi, we were wondering if uh, you wouldn't mind answering some questions for us. Who are you people? What do you want? Uh, we are investigators. Investigating what? A uh, recent rumor that, uh, but recent rumor. Uh, incident, recent no, incident no, no. that we just we, we need to know why you why yes. why did you 
call the alarm the other night. You better come in. Okay. Okay. Go in. I, judging by this guy's place, he is probably a violinist. He owns three different violins, or maybe he just likes violins. Like he has like uh, one of those stands that holds the music and stuff. And he says, "Please sit down. Can I offer you a drink? I know it's a bit early." Uh, what? Um, large tea, please. Hold the tea, whiskey. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> anybody else care for anything? Uh, large whiskey. Hold the whiskey. Just the tea. <laughs> and I'll take the ice cubes. <laughs> oh yes. He, Right, he goes in, you hear him uh, making tea, and you hear a ch -ch 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 sound. Oh dear. Sounds like um, he's going very fast, like ch -ch 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 and mild getting cursing. Right. Yep, it it's shows him chipping him off of a big block that's in his fucking cold box. <laughs> <laughs> Ding. It brings those to you since they're done first. Eventually, he brings the uh, whiskey and the uh, tea. He says, uh, I forget which was which, but uh, it was a cup of each. <laughs> he pours himself uh, uh, two fingers of whiskey. You've only got two fingers of whiskey. This is not a cup of whiskey. Mm -hmm. He looks like the kind of person who doesn't drink that often. He says, Around nine o'clock in the evening of the incident, Summers received a guest. I was meditating and taking in the air at the time by my chair near the open window. It was a warm evening and I couldn't get to sleep. The visitor was there for approximately three hours before the incident occurred. I could hear that they were talking, and often with raised voices and an unfriendly manner, but I could not hear nor care to hear what they were saying. A bit before midnight, a carriage pulled up outside and someone entered the house. I heard the front door open, uh, seemingly with a key, but I didn't look outside. I, at that point, felt an overwhelming, nameless dread, as a child may, for a coming nightmare. Shortly after the carriage arrived, I heard shouting and the sounds of struggles from the apartment below. Looking out, I show, saw shadows cast by a wildly swinging light, and I saw... I think I saw uh, Arthur grappling with another man. Three men, tall, long fingered, thin figures. There was a howl of pain, a gunshot, and then the sounds running down the stairs, followed by a front door banging open, the footsteps into the night. I looked on, paralyzed in terror. The door opened again, and the thin men came out, two of them carrying a what I believe to be the slumped figure of Arthur Summers between them. He drinks his uh, whiskey in such a way that he seems nervous, and Alex is watching, hoping that none of it sloshes out, as it would constitute alcohol abuse. Ah. It brought him to the waiting carriage. The third paused, and he, he turned and looked at me in the window. It was an unholy white face that caused me to faint dead away in terror. Black soul glanced my heart. When I came to my senses, I ran downstairs and roused Mr. and Mrs. Giles, who slept through it all. I demanded the guard should be called. And give me empathy rolls. Yeah. Holy crap. Right. Everybody except Dana believes that this guy is holding back something. Dana, whatever it is, he keeps glancing like surreptitiously back toward uh, another door that probably goes to his bedroom. All right. Is that on the way to the kitchen at all? On the way to the bathroom. Excellent. Excuse me. <laughs> what? What? Uh, where are you going? Need to use your facilities. <laughs> oh, yes, please. Uh, second door on the left. Hey says, and that is my heroic tale. Heroic? Yes, yes, indeed. Very heroic. Thank you. Thank you. So, 
Um, right. When the so the three hours of arguing that you heard, you said raids voices to arguing. Yes. It was the young summer's voice. I couldn't be sure. I couldn't be sure. Two voices, just two dis dis distinct voices, no more. I believe so, but then male they didn't male. Or... Mm -hmm. I believe male. I believe male. What Both would a male. female be doing in a respectable building at that hour? Oh, the patriarchy. Mm -hmm. Two male voices. And around what time was this? Midnight, you said? I believe so. It was late. I couldn't sleep. So I... you said we said nine thirty ish they came they came round, they argued for three hours and then midnight this happened, the men came and took Arthur. Yes. And when you saw one of their faces, it was a, a white, scary looking face. Do you remember more specific? Scary looking face. Scary. Scary. Scary, yes. Wet, I don't know. It was white. I remember it being white. white. Yes. It was like the oh. moon. Moon with all of its horrible grandeur. What did you it say it was? Out on the lycanthropes of the world, changing them from normal creatures into hideously mutated monsters. Would well, you say it was a mask? Oh no, I don't believe so. For a mask still has part of the, hum of the humanity within it, but these had none. Would you care for another drink, sir? Yes, yes, yes. He pours himself a shaky two fingers and just offers you the bottle. Uh, yes. Take what you need. <laughs> it's your <laughs> He just gapes at you. Uh, steady on, he says. <laughs> you said take what I need. He ignores Kinley for a while and looks at Freddy. Uh, is your friend all right? Should we check on him? No, but I was about to ask you. You seem awfully distressed about something. Is there something distressed? Like distressed? Yeah. How can I go on living knowing that good, decent people will be snatched out of their homes in the den of night by horrible thin men? How can that you go on living in a blase world knowing these things exist? Beneath the dark cerulean skies. Is that the only thing you're distressed with? Be honest now. That may have a bit of flatulence. Why? And that, I walk back into the room while holding a doctor's bag and yep. <laughs> plop it in front of him. Oh. Explain this. Damn. <laughs> ah, oh, you wound me, sir. You wound me. I admit it. I admit it all. He begins crying, forgetting to admit whatever the fuck it was. Hey, 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 hey. Focus. Admit He's busy what? weeping theatrically. That's... Where'd you keep the whiskey? <laughs> he commented. <laughs> he says, when I was going down, I saw the open door. I saw it in the room. A small battered medical bag. I took it on impulse. I've become guilt ridden about it. Take it. It's an evil thing, I'm sure, owned by an evil man, and I'm happy to be rid of it. Take it. Take it and be gone and damn you. <laughs> this guy is pretty over the top. You're thinking, what would it be like to be married to somebody like that uh, after the second date? Found... Just step back out of my <laughs> Where did you find this bag again? In the, in the apartment? In his room. He weeps theatrically and ignores Freddy's question as to repeat himself would be less theatrical. Hmm. 
Go, go now. I, I know nothing up. else. I get up. <laughs> I go to the cabinet, I take out a bottle of whiskey, and I go. Uh, I look in the medical back for... Before we it has there. all kinds of interesting shit that you should probably investigate more closely, but probably, if you have any kind of decorum, not here. I pull out one piece, let's say. Uh, I know steps. what this is for. Okay. This got will help you with your platforms. <laughs> Would you like me to help you with your platforms? I am an expert pathologist. Go! Go! <laughs> he squeaks his cape around himself. Go! Very well, but don't leave town. I take the bag. <laughs> I won't. I live here. I snap the... I snap the tool at his face. You sure you don't want help? No, no, go. Go. You strange... Okay. Strange you have a lovely violin collection, by the way. Good day. Hey. <laughs> See you out. Oh, I got my midday bottle of whiskey sorted. Yeah. <laughs> that worked out rather well. Let's let's go to the second floor. All right. Hey. You guys go to the second floor. Your key fits like a glove. She wasn't pushing the glove into the lock. <laughs> It turns out to be a spacious apartment with a large sitting room, uh, study, cloakroom, two bedrooms, and a uh, bathroom, all leading off of a small central hall. There is no sign of forced entry. Uh, however, the sitting room is wrecked with items and furnishings strewn about the place. Two armchairs were overturned. A light fitting, gas, is out of kilter, and the contents of a bureau are spilled out onto the floor. There's a heavy wooden bookcase against one wall and of the sitting room that doesn't appear to have been moved or disturbed. There's a couple of askew leopard-headed paintings of Art Arthur Summers. In case you uh, find him, they'll know what he looks like now. Uh, which is first, going through the bag or the apartment? Quick, quick thing. Um, now we've got to see the apartment kind of full full in is it one apartment one of those buildings where it's one apartment per level or multiple ones per level one apartment per level this is where the uh rich people come to mm -hmm. live and in fact i even have something special for you yeah. and here is a lovely map of his home Chunk. Building entrance foyer. Yes, rich people need foyers. That way they can tell when they are getting ready to go into or leave an apartment building. So are the guiles is are they the first floor then? Or is there yeah, they are Basement. Their basement. So yeah, I was I was gonna say we should um have a hazard a glance to knock on the first floor apartment and just check to see if they happen to hear or see anything that night. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. also I um, in addition to uh for that comment I gave uh Sheila an extra card for the good theatrics and stuff, pulling out the bag at just the right time. <laughs> that poor hippo headed violinist. Uh, yeah, let's look in the back room before we run into the apartment. The contents of the bag would be disturbing if you guys didn't deal with a lot of horrific shit on a weekly basis. Um, in the in the bag, it contains a number of old mismatched medical instruments, including scalpels, forceps, retractors, as well as a small supply of uh, laudanum, ether, and cocaine a brass syringe with traces of something inside also some bandages needle thread cotton pads and the like within the bag is also a small uh dog-eared and blood spotted notebook in which a variety of somewhat disturbing hand-drawn sketches and crap pencil notes and a mixture of english and latin give me um, you guys can tell this guy is definitely a back alley abortionist Type individual. 
but it gets worse than that. Everybody give me a cult rolls and biology rolls. If you make both, let me know. Fumble, right. Freddy, you can tell that this is aliens because they got the big heads and the little bodies and shit. They're probably grays since they're drawn in black and white. Uh, nobody's really sure what the fuck is up with this. You're thinking it looks like dissected fetuses with the weird occult symbols around them and shit for some reason. Also, tucked into the back of the book are several loose leaves of scrap paper that contain lists of dates and times with some initials and sums of money drawn up beside them. In the bottom of the case are also old and greasy looking business cards labeled Joseph Salt MD. Uh, but hold on a second, here's the copy paste of his name just to make life a little bit easier for you. Uh, but, uh, and the there's an address in uh town which has been crossed out in pencil uh there's also a pawn shop ticket uh by the uh in a pawn shop in this town it looks like uh he palmed something called a brass scientific viewing lens and diverse glass slides tarnished and of the second quali quality one quarter of a gold piece money given but you know which pawn shop it is because you guys have been around this town for a while. So it's, oh, it's, for that. it's basically um, a magnifying glass type thing, is it? Um, what do they call them? Microscope. Microscopes, yeah. Does my knowledge of medicine help at all with this bag yes give me a medicine roll wow you're you're thinking that the, this guy's patients might survive more if he was to like i don't know clean his tools <laughs> uh, at all uh plus it looks like uh which time period are you from again like modern day yep Ah, uh, yeah. You're thinking that uh, laudanum, which is basically a mix of cocaine that uh, they used to prescribe to mostly women for hysteria and such like, like, oh, you seem to be angry at the patriarchy. Have some laudanum. That'll make you calm. Or for any any kind of malaise, like, oh, you have women's issues. No, I don't want to know what they are. Have some laudanum. I'm serious. It's for fucking everything. Um, it's basically cocaine mixed in with some uh, other miscellaneous shit. Uh, not a great thing to be giving people. Plus, he has regular cocaine and ether, and God knows what inside of a brass syringe. So, yeah, this guy is not a good doctor. You are like much better doctor than he is, and uh, it's just horrifying. Hmm. This is somebody who's a hobbyist in medicine going and like saying, eh, let's give it a shot, see what happens. I'm wondering if, I'm wondering if uh, Arthur got someone pregnant and hired or was looking into a backhanded abortionist to keep things quiet. But the, something happened and the Bee skin are much more sensible than the humans in that regard, in that they uh, don't have religion uh, clogging up their works and shit. So, uh, having some sort sort of birth control and stuff like that for them is much easier. This is like I'm really poor and I need birth control. Yeah. Whereas this guy was doing pretty good on the money. Yeah, but you probably keep things quiet as well. Uh, it's possible. Good thought. Huh? I gave him a card for it. So. Uh, do you want to look for the now? Or? I think the other, yeah, def, def, definitely keep the notepad, uh, notebook. Um, yeah. Well, you guys can keep it all if you want. It's just a Yeah, yeah. Bag. But I mean, yeah, I'm not really worried about the other stuff. It's more the 
notebook that we should um, maybe try and look at. In a and the address is what I want to find him. The address that's been crossed off? It, who knows why it's crossed off? It looks like it was crossed off of each and every business card and pencil. Right. Uh, going through the apartment, everybody give me, uh, let's see, who wants to be forensics person? Uh, the R2 can make spot hidden rolls. Not me. Not forensics. <laughs> Shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Freddie and Sheila, each of you guys give me spot hidden rolls. And Kinley, give me a forensics roll. Here, I've got a plus 10 for your... Forensics, if you want. I don't think he needed it after all. That's all right. Yeah. Quota. Um, I'm mm. assuming this is not a prestige model. Ah, uh, no. All right. No. So drop that card. It has been called a meat grinder before, but <laughs> it's not a prestige spot. It's definitely a meat grinder if you decide you are Conan. Okay, so I'll skip that one. Right. What Freddie noticed is there's a single arcing blood splash against a dark flock wallpaper and a few drops of blood on the floor headed toward the door. Um, give me a, uh, Freddie, can, you can go ahead and try serology if you want. No? Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, is that on the, oh, it's not. yeah, it's on the sheet. And it is? Yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. Nope, no idea. Cool. Kinley, uh, you're looking at the same stuff. That's what the forensics role was. You're guessing as the back trail from a cutting weapon of some sort. Given the absence of more blood or a body, it's likely to be a superficial cut that bled more as the uh, victim left the building in haste. Um, let's see. And what else would you guys like to check out here? I will let you know when you've found everything. There are no secret fucking doors. You don't have to tap the wall every 10 feet and go, I'm an elf. The bookcase. Right. Checking out the bookcase. Uh, the books are the kind that you buy to buy the uh, uh, meter to fill shelves. Um, let's see. One of the uh, books entitled My Years Among the Elves by W.F. Baines has been uh, left out beside the shelf and placed uh, securely between the pages. You discover a letter. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. And uh, here it is. Oh, it's so tiny. Maybe convince Sheila to read it to you as you stare into space. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm to really Arthur happy. Summers Esquire, sir, know that your sins have found you out. Surely not even the wiles of so beautiful a creature can have blinded you to the depths to which she has had you sink for her amusement or to the terrible danger you are in now in. If you have no care for your own life and reputation, then what of that of your father and your family? Would you have them smeared with the taint and filth of what you have become? Would you have your family's good name become a byword for licentiousness and sin? Are you so base as to ignore what such a scandal would do? Unless you wish for all the dreadful consequences of your actions to come to pass and your worst fears to be realized, you must do as I say. Only I can save you. Only I can make the scales fall from your eyes and see the way clear to you for to make amends. Only I can save your life. Go to Purbright's, the pawnbrokers, on Fall Row in Limehouse and ask for the man Jake's will there. He will instruct you further how to contact me. Go soon if you value your life and your family's name. Your friend, us. 
Dun, 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 dun. Which stands Run. for Summers, so it was him all along, himself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm guessing that the... Um, okay, there we go. <sighs> dun, dun, dun. Um, I'm, is the pawnbrokers mentioned there the same one that we've got the... Yes. Yes. Okay. Also... No, that's a salt. Is then is S A L T condition. True. Mm. Mm. Also, um, you guys find a small caliber bullet lodged in the uh, smashed mirror's backing. Also, on the floor in front of the mantel of the fireplace is a kind of scattered handful of dry straw. Everybody give me smell rolls. I don't smell. I smell. Okay. By a quarter. Uh, you two uh, uh, smell a kind of cloying floral perfume. Also, there's a waste paper basket apparently overturned in a corner by a struggle. Hmm. Anything go uh, in the trash? Yeah, and show, show both of the men go, yeah! <laughs> um, searching through it reveals the crumbled results of several somewhat poor attempts to write poetry, eulogizing the beauty of this empress of dark splendor from the mountain kingdoms, blah, blah, blah. blah. Also, um, some of the more recent looking papers seem to be half started letters to Arthur's father, sometimes getting no further than the opening line, written in a far, far shakier hand. Also, you discover in the uh, bedroom of uh, Arthur's uh, in the nightstand is a brand new uh, cowboy type pistol. It's a Webley Mark I. 455 caliber revolver complete with a receipt, a lacquer wood case, and a cleaning kit. The pistol is nice, polished. It's still got a little bit of gun oil on it and stuff. It looks like it's never been fired. There's a box of 24 shells, and it appears that uh, somebody has spent uh, some time trying to cut little X's in the bullet heads with a pen knife with mixed success. Um, on What's the dressing the table, Sorry. what? What's the receipt for? The gun. Yeah. Where? Yeah. Uh, a, a reputable firm in town okay. that sells guns. So not important then. <laughs> it's super reputable. It's the kind of place you could go to buy a gun if you wanted. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. uh, also in the dressing table in the bedroom, uh, as well as the gentleman's noble accoutrement, is a cheaply printed theater program for a production of the Duchess of Mouth, which run as last month's production at the Orpheum Theater. Hold on, copy paste of that coming so you guys know how to spell this because whoever wrote this was on crack and the author is grinding his teeth. I can hear it. Underlined in the program is the producer's name, Frederick Milton. There's his name. With a note scrawled in pencil beside it that reads, her escort, according to Abner Travisham. Abner? I've heard that name before. As you guys drown in proper nouns. Yeah. Other than that, it appears that there is nothing of interest or value within this apartment that hasn't been missed completely by Sheila Shitty Rolls. <laughs> <sighs> right. Um, does it seem to line up that um, Mr. Upstairs neighbor would have been able to hear things through his window? Like what room would he have been lined up. Is it all just lined up so that he was here in the sitting room? 
Actually, his apartment looks exactly like this apartment as far as layout. So I will let you uh, figure that out on your own. The uh, light lines there are windows in room three. So. I mean, he must have heard that it be called in the god. Mm -hmm. yeah, but you're convinced that you can still put something on him, perhaps send him to jail for yeah. a made up reason. Sounds good. What was doing a bag? You're thinking he would not do well in jail. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. His first cellmate would obviously ask to play uh, mommy and daddy with him, and that would be the end of him. <laughs> well, I'm guessing that if these two are exact layouts, probably unknown first floor person is, is also. Mm -hmm. So now we already know something about him, or not, if it's empty. Does it seem like um, the spare bedroom has been used ever? Uh, it looks like it's become like a storage type bedroom. All right. Mm. Okay. So the plot thickens. Dun, 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 dun. Thank you. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, let us quickly go down to the first floor apartment and have a knock just to see if there was someone down there and indeed they heard anything that night. First, Alex, ah. did you want a gun? No. Okay. Don't do guns. <laughs> oh, that's right. You do... <laughs> I hate guns. I Where love you're going, guns. you don't need guns now anyway. <laughs> Where we're going, I decide <laughs> guns. <laughs> All right, I've got. Sanity form can only use guns and piss him off. <laughs> um, I put the letter. I put the book back in this bag. I put the gun and some bullets in this bag. Yay! Now I have a bag full of stuff. I feel secure again. Well, hooray! There's room in the medical bag now, considering the laudanum and cocaine are no longer there. Where did they go, Alex? Where did what? they go? <laughs> what? What are you saying? Have you been into my medical supplies? <laughs> what are you talking about? Alex, give me another alcohol tolerance roll for doing an entire bottle of cocaine. <laughs> harder, harder roll at last for you. You're finally stepping up. Mm. He looks fucking wired. He looks like he is full of energy and he looks like he wants to go to the 1980s and do an entire pile of blow right now. Let's go clubbing. Or just the first floor. <laughs> it shows him knocking on the door. <laughs> the door is like... What's going on with the door? Why don't the door open? Doors are made to be opened. Don't go over the door. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to make the door open, Kinley? Knock yes. this out. No. <laughs> Do the strength roll thing. I know you've been looking forward to it. I need a check. <laughs> <laughs> right. He knocks the door in and it explodes uh, further into the room. Hello. Uh, it's, it's lodged into the fireplace of room four. Um, the, fortunately, the apartment appears to be empty, although it, it's obvious somebody lives here, and it's the same uh, uh, layout as of you here whoo, from down in the basement. Right, no one's here. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Time, 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 time. Time is money. So are you guys going to run out of the front door, or? <laughs> I'm already out there. Taxi, taxi. Back doors. This way. I'm just... I'm just going with Dana. <laughs> All right. You two go out the back door. Kinley goes out the front door. And as as a handsome cab pulls up and he springs into it, go for a uh, 
uh, danger sense, six sense roll. Kenley, you other two, please give me the stealth roll required. I, I believe it's under 70 for both of you, too. Made it. Uh, yes, I'm afraid, Kinley, that you feel as though somebody has seen you. Damn, damn, there's a feeling again. What's going on? Who's doing this? Who's doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Joseph with white powder on. <laughs> I look around wildly. Cool. Um, you guys get back together at the embassy grounds real quick, so you can figure out your next step. As my next step to the toilet, so I'm AFK. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Yes, that sounds good. As we walk uh, stealthily, Freddie, I guess it's up to you and me. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, damn it. The one time, the one time it does bug and goes, and shit. <laughs> All right, come on, let's go back and uh, discuss what we need to do. Sounds good. Hopefully Not he's of sane enough mind to go there as well. If not, then good luck to you, <laughs> wherever you are. Wherever I am. I go back to your awesome bunker place and I rearrange my bags. As long as it don't touch my area. Go for it. I don't want to touch your area. Don't worry about it. All right. <laughs> some in, some in, in uh, party squabbling going on. I like it. Does this, does this vase have magical properties? I don't know. It's on my vase. Does it grow flowers? I don't know. It's just there. Uh, what do I... I think that I have the ability to see magic, maybe. What would that be? Do you have your glasses with you? I know lies. I do magic. not have glasses with me. Then, nope. That's the only way. Yep. Well, unless you have some super special ability I don't know about. Pro probably not. <laughs> All right, so, um, what's going to be our next move? We Do have, we are drowning in leads. We yep. have all of the nouns. Um, yeah. So oh, yeah. We need to take a our best clues are the two letters I feel. So there's a lot yeah. of information in that new one and we need to decide if they're probably written by the same person. Yeah, this S okay. So the your friend seems to be much more involved than what the letter to the dad made it sound like. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we hopefully could match um, handwriting. Yes, but I'm, I'm kind of sure it's it's even kind of signed off the same way. Your friend. Yeah. Yeah. S and the only the only guy that we know of that's S yeah. is Joseph. Sure. Yeah. Who's a creepy doctor, dude? Yep. Yeah, that's um fun that it was alienish type of things. Mm. Oh, was it alien? So we know. think, or was that uh, false confidence? Oh, I am completely <laughs> confident it's alien. <laughs> so now the thing is, this guy obviously has some uh, money issues. Um, we could tell that by the fact he's pawning shit. Um, from his own um, hmm. stuff. Uh, it may have been uh, quiet money, like don't say anything kind of money. Well, maybe someone found out and... Yeah, I mean, maybe it was simple fact that he wanted the money. You know, he wanted more money, so that's why it was like, I've got information on your son, um, come with the money. Yeah. But the fact that he wasn't there, that's a bit kind of weird. Hmm. So something's yeah, maybe... obviously it's happened. Um, yeah, maybe something happened to him as well. To his plans. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we, 
But it is maybe dramatic. Maybe. The letters disappeared. <laughs> maybe we need to do research on this Joseph Salt guy. See what he's all about. Well, I would suggest let's um let us um go after all the leads first. Um mm -hmm. As far as let's go to the pawn shop and then let's go to the theater, check those leads out, and then we can kind of rack up a list of things to look into and then maybe just do one big, um, one big uh, research attempt. Yeah. yeah, research. So, what do we, okay, what do we need to do at the pawn shop? Um, well, so obviously, the guy told them to go there. Yeah. So he told him to go there to get, gain information, ask for that guy, and then, you know, he'll tell him. Oh, crap. Uh, Logan, can you put us back on the other. Well, after they discard, can you put us back on the other page? I forgot the guy's name, the pawn shop. Sorry. Could the uh, letters come back up? Discard down, then I'll put you back. Tribu, tribu something, I don't know, fucking weird name. Uh, what? You got rid of that? What's wrong with you? I'm using it. Oh, okay. well, you, have to, you have to discard down to four and then use something. Okay. Mm. Oh, it's max six. <laughs> Ooh, I could... mm. No, I'm not going to bother trying to limit it to that. What was it she used? Spy training. Spy training is the new sexy card. Yeah. Uh, sorry, what was his name? Stupid ass. I knew that. Yes, tribute. Uh, Perbright is a pawn broker. Yeah, his name is Perbright. So, yeah, we'll probably need to ask him if he's seen Mr. Summers or not. And what he did for him. And although we're pretty sure that these two letters are by the same author, um, can we confirm that just by looking at them? Handwriting. Mm -hmm. So you wish to compare the handwritten letter with the typed letter. Okay. I'm afraid that... <laughs> There's oh, very it, okay. similarity. You need a special old-fashioned keyboard. <laughs> to slap your handwriting against the page. So, okay, so it is typed. Okay. Yeah, you have the handout. It is clearly typed. <laughs> well, wasn't sure if that, but no, you've you've got the details. I should not have. It was it was a purpose purpose choice there. There's a typewriter invented. It's the 1860s. When the hell did they? Invent the typewriter. He's like doing it with little mini stamps. <laughs> that wasn't invented until the late 1800s, I think. I uh, actually, it's a brand new invention that's come out in the last couple of years. Hmm. Suck it. Yeah, right. 1867 for our world, but it was first patented back in 1829. It's approximately the 1860s to 1870s, so it's only been out a few years. Somebody apparently already stole one and is typing. Uh, uh, or maybe it was invented a couple of years earlier here. I think it was invented between the time that he handwritten wrote the note. In yeah. <laughs> Sheila, my first, right, I like hers the best. Sheila, my, take your card. My first note was handwritten. Damn handwriting. <laughs> I need to go steal that new invention over there. <laughs> this looks crap. I need to up my game. <laughs> I know. Uh, I'll invent a typewriter. <laughs> All right. So besides asking the pawnbroker if he had any contact with Arthur, is there anything else we need to do with him? Um. Well, on the off chance that the microscope was not pawned only for convenient money, perhaps we want to take a look at that. And it's, yeah. there were slides involved as well. We still mm. don't know what's on this in this um, 
this tube of unknown stuff in the uh, doctor's bag. I, I could always inject it if you want and find out for you. Nope, it's in my bag. Damn it. Mm. Yeah, were the were the slides like um like camera slides or were they like those sample like DNA sample slides? Or how slides were they? To match your little brass microscope. Oh, so to, oh, right, okay. To increase the zoom and stuff. Gotcha. Probably biology samples. Mm. I'm sure we've got enough to buy it back, right? If he's still got it. No, we just we're just gonna browse for a long time. <laughs> He's never actually opened the bag of coins, yeah, so he true. has no idea. It could just be filled with like uh, uh, those things that you punch out of like metal things, uh, <laughs> you know, the metal circles and shit. Ooh, how did that happen? Says the lawyer. Right. Uh -huh. say he was, he's a lawyer, so mm. he runs off. Yeah, yeah, no telling. Commemorative uh, uh, metal dust. Well, one quarter of a gold piece is not a lot of money. Yeah, which almost makes me think that there's something on there, and this was kind of a way to not have it stolen, especially if he doesn't have an yeah. office anymore. You're not. You're not gonna. You. You. He. He got that for it. You're not gonna pay that to get it back. You're gonna pay a lot more. No, no. I mean, yeah, it's not a lot to sell it for. So why do we sell it? That's for what workers do. Yeah, I was going to say, for normal people, they're making less than a dollar a day. So, you know, that's like a week or two uh, oh. money for some of these yeah. people. For the PCs, it's not a lot of money because PCs are like, yeah, all I got is a, I've only got 50 gold left. So, you know, I should only buy two homes. Okay, fair enough. I mean, money really goes a lot further in this zone than it does in a lot of our zones. It's just the zone doesn't have anything you particularly want. Okay. Um, what were the other leads? The Orpheum Theater was one. This Frederick Milton guy. You could buy two shitty horses for one gold piece. And those are like the cars of this time. For you could buy a whole barrel of wheat flour for about what he got for the microscope. Oh, yeah, that's the same. Mm -hmm. uh, for room and board for a month, you could get that. Uh, you get two months of room and board for about what he pawned it for men. Women was cheaper. Reverse sexism? I don't know why. It was a whole dollar cheaper for women to room and board than men. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's sexist. Yeah, well, I, I suspect that women were cleaner, drank less, and... Uh, Brought home less women, maybe. Yeah. Wow, depends <laughs> what kind of woman you were. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to the pawnbrokers and take a look at the slides and ask for Jake Well. Cool. You guys head over to the pawn shop. Now, as you're walking through the bad side of town, uh, keep in mind, it's still a relatively new bad side of town, but they're working on making it worse. I'm, I'm keeping an eye out for people following. All right. Yeah. Um, oh, thank you, Pick Card Matt, for reminding me. Everybody give me a six sense danger sense as you're getting ready to leave the embassy, which is on the fucking posh side of town because hey, that's where he made it. Freddy's like, there's danger, and he shits himself. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, as you guys are getting ready to leave the embassy grounds, you feel as though you are being watched. And Kinley's like, it's those same fuckers from before. They followed me. I should sacrifice Freddy to their heathen gods. Oh, um, to be clear, I have, while well, we were waiting for Alex to meet up with us. I've moved my things into my regular backpack. The okay. um, are you still carrying around the uh, the carpet bag as well? No, no? I'm going to leave that there. 
and but move like the book, the all of our clues, and oh, the sorry. gun into the bag. The gun um, appears. There's nothing special about it. It's still in the original case. You could go buy several of those if you really wanted to. Uh, let me before we leave the embassy. Area and grounds. Um, I wanna quickly pop over to my storage locker, grab my shit, come back, and then leave. Got it. No problem. Yeah, your locker hasn't been robbed yet, but when you're in your locker trying to get it, you uh, have a weird vision, or you're seeing it in the back of your locker. You're really not sure. It looks like this. Hmm. Where am I looking? Uh, uh, yeah, about the middle corner. top. Yeah. yeah, the cloud moth thing. Right in. And they're all yeah. saying, return, return, return. Listen, I've got stuff to do right now, right? I'll cool. return the thing. <laughs> Wait, Carry <what>? on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bye. 